Okay. Hi everyone. Um, this is just a quick video for my 3273. We're gonna start by talking about um, a little bit about the norm and about um, things called isometries. Okay, so let's start off. We have the inner product space V. Here's our inner product, these brackets. And we also have the norm. And the norm of a vector is just the square root of the inner product of V with V. Okay, and just to remind you about the norm. The norm of CV is just like uh, modulus of C times the norm of V. Norm of V plus W is less than or equal to norm of V plus norm of W. Norm of V is always greater than or equal to zero. And the norm of V equals zero if and only if V equals zero. There's like a few other properties like um, about like if the norm comes from an inner product, then you can say things like you can also say, and it does in this case, of course, you can also say that uh, if the inner product of V and W is zero, then the norm of V um, plus the norm of W squared is just the norm of V plus W squared, for example. Okay. And um, there's other things you can you can write down like um, I guess one would be like the parallelogram law or something like that. Okay. Anyways, so we have these um, these properties about the norm. Um, they're pretty straightforward. Maybe the toughest one would be the triangle inequality, which you would prove using. Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. Um, there's kind of a trick to that, but we won't really talk about it too much today, at least. Okay, so we have this the norm. Okay, and this is just a notion of length of a vector. Okay, and if I have a linear transformation from v to v, we call it an isometry if the norm of t of v always equals v. Oh, and of course, uh, I mean, this linear algebra, so T must be a linear transformation. Because this is a linear algebra. Okay. Okay, so we have isometries. That is, um, you know, linear transformation that preserve the length of a vector. Of course, um, isometries are one to one. So, so that's so that's nice. Um, we also have this like we can prove like kind of a characterization of an isometry. T is an isometry if T is if this formula is satisfied. And this formula says inner product of t of v with t of w is equal to inner product of v with w for all v and w. Okay. Now, if this for formula is satisfied, it's uh, straightforward to prove that t is an isometry because um, you know if you have this formula, well, just take v equals w, then um, that tells you that the norm of t of v squared is uh, the norm of v squared, and so the norm of t of v equals the norm of v. Okay. Um, to re prove the reverse uh, direction, so if we suppose that t is an isometry, in order to show this formula, we need to know these um, these identities. Okay. and you can actually like it's to come up I mean I would have never thought of these identities but um, once you know what the identities are it's straightforward to just um, like 
each of these is uh, some like norm squared so you expand them out and cancel everything off and you you end up with inner product of w and u right okay so we have these um these identities and you can use these identities along with the fact that t is an isometry so 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 what do we do a look at let's do like the real case So we look at t of w, t of u, and we apply the identity. Well, it's, it just says the inner product of t of w with t of u is just a quarter times norm t of w plus t of u squared minus norm of t of w minus t of u squared, okay, a quarter. Now t is a linear transformation, so this is just a t of w plus u. And this is t of w minus u norm squared. Okay. Now t is an isometry. That means that the norm of t of w plus u is just norm of w plus u. This is the norm of w minus u, and now we just apply um, the the this identity again, but in the reverse direction. So now this is just the inner product of w and u as required, showing that t the the formula is satisfied for t. This formula t of w inner product with t of u is just inner product of w and u, okay. and um, the case where the scalar field is a complex numbers is similar, but it, it just, um, you know, involves four terms instead of two, but it's the same idea anyways. Okay. So that's the end of, so we know that isometries satisfy this identity. Okay, and now we can show that um, if V is finite dimensional, um, we can kind of classify the isometries. Okay. Suppose V is finite dimensional. Then T is an isometry if and only if T star T equals the identity transformation. Okay. Let me first remind you what is the defining property of T star? Let's just let me just write it over there. Remember, um, T star is the, the linear transformation such that if W inner product of t of v with w is always equal to inner product of t star w with v. Good. That's what, what that's what t that's how t star is defined. Okay. And for isometries that means uh, if t is an isometry, its inverse is actually t star. So t inverse equals t star. Okay, so let's prove that. Okay. Well, first let's suppose t star t equals the identity. Then look at um, norm of t of v squared. Well, that's just square root of t of v, t of v inner product. And that's just square root of um, t star t of v with v. And now t star t is just the identity, so t star t of v is just v. 
that's just norm of v squared. So norm of t of v squared, oh sorry, uh, I had a square root so I don't need this, these, sorry about that. Anyway, so we see that the norm of t of v equals the norm of v, so t is an isometry. Okay, so now suppose t is an isometry, well, then if I look at the inner product of t of v and t of u, that's just the inner product of v and u for all v and u. Okay. But the norm the inner product of t of u with t of u is also alternatively we can just use the definition of t star. Um, whenever we see a t on the right, we move it over and it becomes t star. So we see that it's this is the inner product of t star t of v with u. Okay. So we see that inner product of t star t of v with u is the inner product of v and u. Okay, for all v and u. So therefore, um, inner product of v minus t star t of v inner product with u equals zero. In particular, equals zero for all u and v and v. Okay, now if um, that we just need to know like a fact and that is if uh, let's say w inner product u equals zero for all u then w equals zero why is that? well you just take um, u to equal w and that tells you that inner product of w and w equals zero which means that w equals zero and so similarly if this inner product is zero for all u it means that v minus t star tv equals zero for all v in other words v is equal to t star t of v for all v in other words, T star T is the identity. The identity map on V. Okay, as required. 